with Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the first Sunday of the month, which means it's time for Chef Del's Kitchen, where Chef Del Shroff shows us amazing, delicious, whole food, plant-based, oil-free recipes. And today he's going to be doing some special recipes, St. Patrick Day yumminess, because St. Patrick's Day is, I believe, is it two weeks from 17th, today? 17th, so we've got four, yeah, two weeks. Two weeks from today, give you yeah. lots of time to prepare. And he's also going to offer you a special offer if you want to support him and his work, because he does so much coming on this show every month. He's part of the 2024 Vegan Health Bundle. He's got an amazing offering in it, which he'll tell you about. And if you just click the link below this video or in the chat, you can support Dell and get the bundle from him with an additional 2,000 recipes. It's over $8,000 worth of content if purchased separately from over 150 of your favorite plant-based doctors, chefs, creators, influencers, and even vendors who have given coupons like $10 off for Plant Strong, which I just used to buy their burgers. Please welcome Chef Dell. Happy one week after your birthday. Well, thank you. Happy, um, happy, uh, happy belated birthday to me. I'm uh, excited to be here and um, still picking on the planet, Chef AJ. <laughs> it's so good to see you. You're you're a real chefy chef. Did you do anything special for your birthday? No, I no. I literally laid on the couch all day and watched movies and such all day long. I was very. It was the one, and I wanted to. I needed to be getting ready for the bundle because I came in late to looking at all the content. But I said, no, I'm going to be taking my day. I'll do some work on Sunday and make the magic happen then. What kind of movies do you watch when you lay around and watch movies? I'm pretty eclectic taste, but I'm a big sci-fi fan. So I'm always looking at sci-fi. Um, yeah, I love it. It's if fun. you like sci-fi, are you familiar with a show that is actually my favorite television show called Resident Alien? I've heard I've, I've heard it. I maybe have seen an episode or so, uh, but I've never watched the whole series. Well, it is on Netflix now, season one and two, and I really recommend it. He, he is the most delightful actor, Alan Tudyk, who plays Harry. I really, I don't watch a lot of shows, but I'll tell you, that's my fave. Okay. All right. I'll check it out. Check it out. Hey, Rich. Rich is here in the house watching from Sacramento. So St. Patrick's Day, we think of corned beef, we think of cabbage, we think of anything green like shamrock shakes. and We do do the, all those things, but I uh, I wanted to do something different from last year's offering. And I forget what that was last year, but um, I know there was Irish soda bread in the mix. So this year I thought I would do cabbage rolls and a lovely Irish dish. Um, and then we're doing this this new recipe. I've not made this. I I I, I never do this. I rewrote this recipe and um, said, okay, let's let's make it happen. There's a, a dish called Gur cake. Gur cake's an Irish confection consisting of two thin shortbread layers and sandwiching a rich filling that's made with breadcrumbs of all things, dried fruit and spices. So um, you get to watch me either pull off a recipe that I've never tried before or fail miserably. I, I think it, it's an easy recipe and I've gotten pretty good over the years at being able to look at a recipe and say, okay, this will work, it's not. What we did though, we had to find a shortbread crust recipe that was oil free, all that kind of stuff. And there are lots of uh, new creators out there that are creating some of these confections oil free. So my hat's off to them for giving me a little support uh, without even trying and making it happen. I'm starting off though with cabbage rolls because we want to get some things in the oven and make all the magic happen there and get them out for you in time to see them. I did some things ahead of time. I'm starting here with my mirepoix sauteing, my onions, my carrots, and my celery. And then I've also, ahead of time, I um, I cooked my millets. We're using millet as a base. You can use millet or you can use um, bulgur wheat. You, really, for this, you can use almost any grain. You'll need three and a half cooks of whatever you use. So mm -hmm. it's up to you, right? If you want to use buckwheat, go for it. I, I have millet in the house more than I have almost any other thing. I use it a lot. I love it. It's yeah, such a healthy grain. I know it's one of your favorites. What about rice, though? For, for some, like, not everybody has <laughs> millet in the house. Could you use brown rice if you didn't have millet or buckwheat? Easily three and a half cups of brown rice. Um, bulgur wheat is what's called for the other one called for in the recipe. Anything like that. And of course, for those of you that are new here, you'll see that I'm um, sauteing this. No oil. 
And we're starting off with a dry skillet. A lot of people do no oil, and they start off by adding a little liquid in the pan first. I started off dry uh, with the right vegetables so that they can brown. And then I only add water if I need to. Ahead of time, I also did the cabbage leaves. Um, I went and, and, and put those in boiling water for a few minutes to soften them up so that they're easy to work with. So um, that, that will save us some time there. And then I made my tomato sauce for the cabbage roll ahead of time. The tomato sauce is it's such an easy thing to see. Most of these dishes are easy, by the way, guys. And you could use canned tomato sauce if you wanted to. But here's the deal. The tomato sauce starts off pretty much like the cabbage. So you saute your onion, you add some garlic and tomato paste and oregano and cook that for a minute. Then you add your crushed tomatoes and just let it cook for 20 or 25 minutes and, and off you go. There's no reason to buy a tomato sauce when it's that easy to make, right? So do that for yourself. The other thing they did, so we're making this, this crazy girt cake that um, calls for soaking breadcrumbs in black tea. I, I think it's the craziest thing I've ever seen, but okay, we're going to do it. Um, you're soaking breadcrumbs in black tea, and then you refrigerate that uh, for an hour, and I did that already. I used a sprouted green bread because I'm trying to keep it healthy. I took the crust off, and then I'm going to use the crust for... Um, da -da 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 -da. I'm using the crust for... Uh, to make croutons for salads, duh. So I'll do that um, ahead of time. So while my vegetables cook here, I'm going to go ahead and and do finish making the um, the filling for the gur cake, which all I need to do is to add some of my spices. Where do they go? AJ, where'd I hide them? Where'd your spices go? I don't know. You didn't do your mise en place? I did my mise en place, and there's spices around here somewhere. Did I already add them? I hope so. Oh, good Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, that's going to be good. Spices are already in there. And then to that, we're going to add. And that's it. And you've got whole grain bread. you got your black tea. I put apple juice in there. For those that don't want to do black tea, you could also do decaffeinated tea. Uh, maple syrup, you could do date paste. Raisins, ginger, cinnamon, cloves. Uh, nutmeg, coriander, and then um, baking powder, and that is it. But I'm looking to see, I don't think I put my baking powder in. I'm going to do that really quickly. You know, AJ, the 63-year-old mind is a little slower. Uh, you're still younger than me. <laughs> But um, I'm going to keep trying. I honestly thought you were only in your 50s. I didn't realize you were. Honey, you keep saying that because my little my little brain loves you every time you say it. I really did. I thought you were at least 10 years younger than me. So <laughs> good, good for you. Yay, I'll take it. So while that, um, I got my girl cake filling ready to go. And then to make the um, the shortbread crust, let me find it. We're just going to, oh, you need to see this, don't you guys? I don't know if I can show it to you and cook and not burn at the same time. All right. So I've got um, almond butter. You could use any nut or seed butter that you like. I've got maple syrup. I think you could use, I've not tried it for this shortbread crust. You could use... Um, um, you could use date paste, I'm sure. Chef AJ has shown us that you can use date paste for almost anything. And then you've got almond flour, baking powder, and sea salt. And you've got whole wheat pastry flour. You could use a gluten-free blend if you want to. And then mix that up. And that's, and I should have, what I did not do is mix up my wet ingredients first and then add my dry ingredients. But oh well. We're not going to, we can't undo it, so we'll just keep doing it. And then I'll show I'm stirring that together, and I'll show you the dough here in a second. And then my cabbage rolls, I'm adding my garlic in, my herbs, my basil, um, there's um, nutmeg, nutritional yeast, and then tahini sauce. 
or tahini, sorry. In my community in CNS Kitchens, I've got a diverse group of people, and one of them was making her own tahini today and showed me a picture of her toasting the seeds. And I love that kind of, um, of uh, do-it-yourself mentality that you, you don't have to depend on store-bought for anything. So believe it or not, making your own tahini from ground toasted sesame seeds it's going to be a lot cheaper than um, would be buying it um, in jars. And it's going to save you some packaging, too. I wish I had another camera that I could move over here and show you my already growing stack of dishes. So we've added all everything but the millet and salt and pepper, and then we add that um, in. So I've got, and I'll tell you what, I had a discovery. I don't know what's going on with this last batch of millet that I bought it um it's it I, I've never heard of quick cooking millet AJ have you I have never heard of quick cooking millet no and well, millet doesn't take that long to cook though something's going on in the millet world because traditionally I'll take my millet and I will um I will uh oops that's, that's done. Take my millet, and you add um, two to one ratio of water to millet, and let it cook for 15, 20 minutes or so. Is that how you do yours, AJ, or you do yours in the pot? I do mine in the uh, in the rice cooker, actually. In Just the rice regular rice cooker where you take, you know, with a certain amount, and then it goes to the line. Like, if you have one cup, you put it. That's how I've always done it. Okay. But you can do it in the Instant Pot, too. Oh, yeah. Well, for some reason... This millet, the last time I think I, I did it on your show, it was done way too quickly. I don't understand why. And there was extra water in it and it had a little bit soggy or something. So I'm not so sure what happened with this batch, but I just ordered a new batch. So hopefully it'll get back to normal or I'll have to start adjusting what I'm doing. And you guys, I always, I, I always taste as I cook. Do you, AJ? Not always. It depends, Del. If it's a recipe I've done a lot, no. If it's a new recipe, yes. Let me just say nothing. Yum. It's a delicious filling, just like it is. And by the way, if you want to eat that just like it is, whew, you'll be very happy. Uh, there's a million things you could do with this. Pot. This, you know, this is kind of the foundation for my millet loaf. Uh, for my the meal loaf, so you you've made it. Oh um, yeah, I love your millet loaf, and you know you used to sell it in mixes. You don't still do that, do you? They, the wellness form still sells it in mixes. Uh, my former business partner and her her groupies um, still do. So it is still available if you want to buy a mix. That um, yeah, this is good. I can't wait. I love cabbage rolls. My mom used to make them. Of course, we did the hamburger version. And this is a much healthier, much, much healthier version. So the next time you're making millet loaf, cook some extra millet so you can do this. And by the way, you could use the millet loaf recipe itself uh, to do this. And I'm only going to put together a few of these so you can see them. But I'll, you put some tomato sauce or our pre-made tomato sauce in the bottom of the pan. Let's see if I can do this, how easily this is to do. I'll set this aside, and I take one of my, my cabbage leaves, and then I'm just going to eyeball it, about a third of a cup of your filling. That's probably more like a half a cup. And you're supposed to cut the, uh, the, the rough stem off if it's, if it's not tender. But this one doesn't need it. I think I got these just about right. So you take it, and you can see it there. Where is she? How far are you in the menu? There you go. You take that and you fold the top over your filling, fold your ins, your outsides in, the wings as we call them, and then roll it up. And that's that's one done. Easy, right? I'll show you again. This one I am going to tear out the that stem right there. Throw that into some soup or something later, or stir fry. There's nothing, nothing at all wrong with it. He's he's not going to come out. 
that easily. All right, and then put a spoonful of our magical filling in there. Roll that over the top, pull the sides in, and, and there you go, right? It doesn't have to be pretty or perfect. You're gonna pour tomato sauce over that and make some other kinds of magic happen. Whoops. And see if I can get this stem out of there. A uh, knife, there you go. One more time. All right, guys, ask questions in the, uh, in the comment box if you have any. By the way, um, I know these recipes are not in the bundle. You're getting them anyway. But here's the deal. In my ebook that I put together for the book, the bundle, which is a, a collection of salad dressings, etc., cetera, um, there are two sauces that I would serve, one with this dish. Um, which is my uh, horseradish sauce. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Horseradish sauce, I would serve not with this dish, but with um, the potato cakes we're gonna make a little bit later. So if you're getting that bundle, I get another one rolled up. Let me do one more for you and I'll set these aside. This, by the way, took me two heads of cabbage because as you get down inside of the, uh, the head, then it tends to, um, they get small and they get, they get dense. There, 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 roll that up, and voila. So there you have your cabbage rolls, and then all you're going to do is spoon some sauce over that. Oh, I'm going to be so happy later when I come home for dinner. I'm going to leave immediately after this to meet a friend for coffee. So I won't get to have this for lunch, but I am going to have that for dinner. So there you can see the before oven view. I'll throw those in. And I'll tell you what, I did not intend for this to be an all oven day, AJ, where everything finishes up in the oven, but oh well. I missed the days where I had a Three ovens. I saw I, the one of the few things I miss about a commercial kitchen is ten burner stove and three ovens. I don't cook that kind of quantity of food anymore. But man, actually, we can't see stuff anymore. It moved away a little bit. There is nothing happy. I just cleaned off the counter. Well, that's why we're not seeing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're just. Uh, <laughs> I'm cleaning up for you because if my mama were still here, she would insist. And just making some room. Nobody go anywhere. You should show the cabbage rolls again. Yeah, when they come out of the oven, I'll show them. Is that okay? Yep. All right. So here we are. This is the shortbread crust for the uh, gur cake. And if I if it weren't so inconvenient to do so, I would really get in here with my hands and um, put this together. Well, I think we may have to anyway, uh, just so that it all comes together easily. And if it seems a little bit dry, but it won't hold together. When you put, squeeze it between your hands like that, it should hold together. And that, that, that will. Um, so we're okay. And I'm going to taste a little bit of that. Great flavor. I don't know how short bready that's going to be. And then I'll pull our, our filling again. And then half of your short bread dough is going to go to the bottom here. And I've got parchment lines. I didn't have a uh, I usually use the sill pat, but I didn't have a sill pat that would um, fit my eight inch pan. I assume they make them. And if I were baking them more, you know, I don't bake a lot anymore, AJ, even though 
I Even kind of, though you used to have a bakery. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's just a trigger food for me. You know what I mean? I know, flour, man. Flour and sugar. And so I, um, I'm trying to get my breads and flour consumption down to a manageable place. So you got to, sometimes you just got to take it all out. I'm going to add a little bit of water to the rest of this uh, so that it holds together better when we put it on top, right? So that goes like that. And this looks very wet. Like I said, this is an experiment. So if this works out, well, I'll be happy. If not, I, I'll tell you what, I might, um, I imagine there's gonna be something edible out of this one way or another, don't you, AJ? I think so. Sometimes you'll take your messes and turn them into new things. Yeah. And that can be what happens. So then- There's a question from Debbie about your cabbage rolls. She says, they look delish. Do they have to be cooked? No. Once you cook, if you so, if you did everything, well, I did everything ahead of time. But if you did everything all at once, um, and your millet's hot and everything's hot, uh, you roll it up and and put it on a plate and uh, top it with sauce and serve it. Good question, Debbie. Would they get softer though if you cooked them a little longer? Well, you probably what you want to do is when you're cooking to soften your um, your cabbage leaves. Right. When you're cooking to soften your cabbage leaves, cook them longer so that um, they get more tender. The cabbage leaves that I cooked are just about tender enough to eat. I left them a little bit um, firmer so that, um, what am I saying? So that for, for the baking purposes. All right, this is our, our Gur cake. Um, if, if this fails, we, we're going to have to talk about a revision, which means I'll probably post a video of me remaking it at some point, but uh, we'll all know together here shortly. So that goes into our oven. Oh, we're doing pretty good on time. After we uh, get everything in the oven, AJ, we can talk more bundle. Mm, yeah, find out what your contribution is and what you like. Yeah, so let's make some magic happen here. All right, up next is um, my mother made potato cakes often. I don't know. We there's no Irish in her family, though there is in my father's family. But she she made them, and we loved them. And she would take leftover uh, leftover uh, whole wheat potatoes or whole wheat potatoes leftover potatoes and uh, make them happen with with those. And I think hers may have had egg in them to egg and green onion, if I remember correctly. Um, we're gonna do, a, of course, a, a vegan version. We are starting off with some whole wheat pastry flour. Oh my gosh, that poor sink. And then baking powder, sea salt. You use salt, right? And we'll just mix those together. And then we're going to add the remaining ingredients. So it cooks, I, I had to cook ahead of time, of course, mashed potatoes. And you'll notice that I do leave the skin on my mashed potatoes because there's nutrition there. I buy organic potatoes, so I'm not scared to do so. Almond milk, unsweetened plant milk, or whatever kind you use. Um, that one is almond milk. And then we're going to put in a cup of, looks like you can see me doing it. A cup of um, grated potato, too, which yeah. I found an interesting part of the recipe. Uh, Nan Simonson is watching. She says you're going to be cooking on her channel on Friday. I know, Nan. What should we cook? Something good. I will figure something out. I may do something from the bundle. I haven't done that yet. All right. So there, that's probably close enough to a cup. And then we're just going to mix this up. So, guys, let me just talk about the power of mise en place. You see how quickly we started at about 10 after, and almost everything is, is ready to go. You see how quickly that all happened? This is a wet pancake right here. So, let's get our 
baking sheet. Um, you could fry these in your favorite nonstick skillet. I've learned the hard way that the nonstick skillet works best without oil if you cook it on low. And I know I tend to be one of those chefs that <laughs> cooks everything on high. Um, I'm always a good, just get it done quickly, blah, blah, blah. But um, I, I saw someone do this on low, and it worked out beautifully. So look at this. These are our boxy. It's a lot like a pancake, I'll tell you that. I, so that's the that's like the latka of the Irish. This is the Irish latkas. <laughs> ah, I, t I used to make latkas every year for my business partner, Dr. Popper. Your, our friend, Dr. Popper, she uh, always, around Hanukkah, I would surprise them with her. And her dad, she made them and, or had them, ordered them and got them for her dad one year. And he said they were the best latkas he'd ever had. Which I, I found to be a great compliment because, you know, people think their version is always the best. All right, so that is our alakas, our alakas, or I have this alakas. It says 12 pancakes. Obviously, I made them bigger and we're getting six. That's okay. But they should cook pretty quickly because I turned the oven up higher uh, for that very reason. Let me go over here. While we're chit chatting, and I'll make me larger. Ooh, magic, magic of television. And do I look larger on screen, AJ? <laughs> now you do because you're full screen. <laughs> and let's talk bundle. So I have to say, I watched your presentation with Mark Reinfeld yesterday, Chef Mark, and I ate in one of his restaurants years ago. It might have been in Portland, I think. Uh, it was fantastic food. Um, but I was thrilled to hear he's a chef like we are. Like, he grew up through the ranks. Uh, you know, my, my cooking experience is 34 years in, in vegan and vegetarian kitchens. So it's, it's amazing to me that a t as, as such a talented, talented chef as he uh, and his food, the flavor of his food, the presentation, all of that uh, made me want to aspire to be a, a different um, kind of chef. So there you go. Um, where are we seeing me at? Are you seeing me right there? I, I, I mean, I'm looking at you. I mean, well, that, okay. So I've got another camera on. <laughs> well, other, well, I, have, I don't know. Where are you? I have three cameras going on here. <laughs> One that you're apparently seeing is on the computer again. And I guess that's just the way it's going to be. That's so funny. As long as you can see me. So yeah, talk about the bundle in general, what you've seen, what you like, and what you contributed. Well, so I contributed a, a book that I created many years ago. The original version is uh, still available at the Wellness Forum, but I updated it um, to include some new recipes, including an Italian dressing and a um, an, another vinaigrette that I like a lot. Um, and I, one of my secrets, one of my discoveries for me I've used applesauce as a fat substitute and egg substitute for years in, in baking, but I um, never thought of it as an oil substitute in a salad dressing. And it works really well, again, for the same reason it works in other recipes, because the pectin in the applesauce, especially when you puree it in the blender, gives you that sort of texture, that, that, that cling to itness. I don't know how else to say it, that oil does. Right. So it works really beautifully. So any recipe when you 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 don't have to replace oil with silk and tofu, especially if you don't like to eat tofu, um, you do it with applesauce or any any fruit like it that has that high pectin in it and it will make a big difference. So there's that. I mentioned also in this this book um, and I think in the show notes, I list some of the different flavors that I have in that ebook, um, uh, several creamy dressings and and. Um, the Southwest dressing is one of my favorites. I use it and I make a, a Southwest pasta salad. I've made a Southwest potato salad that all have like green onions and red onions and cilantro and um, well, some roasted red pepper um, and, and, and black beans and corn, et cetera. Uh, well, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I sold that salad, the pasta salad version of that for years at a local festival here 
uh, where I used to sell my food. It's and it's very very popular. So the the salad dressings are great. They all have great flavor. The spicy mustard, sweet and spicy mustard dressing, is probably the most popular dressing I've ever made. Uh, people used to come and order quarts of it. We for a period of time sold it bottled at Wellness Form Health, and then we we used um, Arc Industries, which helps put people within the um, uh, mental disability spectrum, to, gives them jobs. For some reason, their kitchen shut down, so we didn't get to keep doing it, and I haven't found another source yet. But it's a great one. That and the orange vinaigrette, also another really good one. And my stir-fry sauce, which if you join me in CNS Kitchen, where I live, um, and take my beginner's course or uh, look along for any of my recipes, you'll find that stir my stir-fry sauce is a great recipe. It's not in the bundle, maybe next year. Um, but I love Mark Reinfeld's um, The Seven Pillars that he talks about in cooking. And, and we agree on a lot of these, especially with one of the last ones, which is, is look at, or first or last, look at recipes as templates, right? We, 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 we want you to get away from looking at, at a recipe as the law because they're just starting places. They're just a collection of techniques using certain ingredients and that can be changed out easily. Um, I teach this in my beginner's course in CNN's Kitchen, um, and it's a technique that a few people have started to embrace, and they, they'll come and ask me questions about it. Can I do that? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, the, the, the key to it, there's certain keys to it we talk about in that course. So I loved his book. Um, another, um, I, what, I was shocked, by the way, at the uh, cookbooks that are like 100 recipe cookbooks in this, in this bundle, AJ. Yeah. The Northern uh, Northern Indian is one that I'm excited That's about. That's a great uh, one by Broccoli Mom. We've made about four of her recipes already. They're top notch. Well, they look top notch. As someone who's been uh, cooking and loving Indian food most of his life, um, the first vegetarian I ever met, my friend Jean, has been vegetarian since 1969, lived in India for many years, and learned how to cook. And, 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 and the recipes look very similar, except without the ghee and without the oil. Um, you know, we, we think that we have to toast our spices in Indian cooking, uh, and you don't. You can dry toast spices and, and get just as good flavor. But her recipes look amazing. I'm looking forward to trying them some more. Um, Sweet Emmy's desserts. Um, there's several desserts in there that are oil-free. Oil-free and desserts like cakes and muffins and stuff is hard to do. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of those and how they turn out. Um, you know, we've talked about me being an emotional uh, eater and, um, and, and, and all of that has uh, wrought on my life. And I loved our friend. Um, oh, heck. She lives right there near you, but she has the uh, trigger journal. Um, trigger journal. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, she has a, she put a journal in there. She's 80 years old. She's, she's that fantastic. Linda Middlesworth? Linda Middlesworth, her contribution. Okay. Um, do I need to go look at my, my bundle? But I love, uh, so, you know, this bundle is not just, it's 2,000 recipes, yes, but it's it's also helped getting you started on your way towards um, um, adopting a healthy, well-adapted uh, plant-based life. And, you know, uh, you heard me say, and I watched your interview with Dr. Furman. I don't follow Dr. Furman a lot, but I was excited to hear him talking about the mindset behind eating as being an important part of, of weight loss and of getting our help and eating healthier. Is that you've got to develop a mindset for this. You, you can't just think like, so in other words, for me, my battle for many, many years was always wanting all of those foods that I used to eat or some version of them. And, and instead of learning to eat more simply to adapt a simpler palate and to make that my daily regimen. So making, making healthy habits, habits, making them habits, letting your body adjust and having enough time for them to become habits. Oh, uh, it's so empowering. And I'm, I'm working on several things like that right now in my own journey and i'm thrilled with the progress that i'm seeing um in being able to manage cravings being able to think differently about my food choices so that i'm not sitting here at 10 o'clock at night going yeah it's not going to hurt i'm just going to go ahead and order that vegan pizza anyway 
I'm not doing it. And part of it is that, you know, at 63, you see the, the results of your behavior come in a little bit more quickly. And in other words, when I eat crap at night, I sleep, don't sleep well. So eating, making healthy choices is a, a great way towards um, um, me seeing better results and, and feeling better. Um, so Linda Middlesworth, it's called Emotional Eating Journal. If you haven't seen that, that's her contribution. Uh, it's Emotional Eating Trigger Journal. What are she identifies triggered and helps you um, do some writing about it. So I love that one. Um, who else? Um, I am going to be on my channel on my Facebook Live Wednesday with um, Ann Arbor Vegan, um, um, Vicki Brett Gock. Vicki was one of my students when I had a personal chef certification course. She was one of my students, and um, she's gone on to do some wonderful things, including writing her first cookbook. So we're going to get together and um, 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 uh, talk and talk about the bundle etc. Um, I was happy to see one thing from one of the, uh, Dr. Loomis, um, from uh, one of the medical centers, has a membership um, that, that they can help you with you know, managing medicine. So when, when you put a, a doctor who practices lifestyle medicine together with a nutritionist or someone who can show you the food side of it, it's a win-win situation. Um, so for some people, especially if you're medicated or highly medicated if you're dealing with uh, certain diseases and such uh, finding someone to work with you to improve your health and get you off all of that crazy medication i smell food um is is key it's important um and everyone is starting to see that including my business partner former business partner the popper now has someone who in her office can do labs and all that kind of stuff for you a great practitioner Look at the gorgeous cabbage rolls. Can you see those guys? Oh, no, I only see you. We're only on one camera right now. Uh -oh. I only see you. Let's go back to the... Uh... And then I have a few questions in the chat for you. Okay. Well, what just happened? Hmm. Oh, it's just... There. And... Still you. <laughs> I know. Right? Well, you know. One of these days, I'm going to grow up and get There a... you go. Now we see the cabbage. Oh, Lord. There's our, our cabbage rolls. And again, you're, you, you know, if you you do not have to put it in the oven, but there you go. And if you want to have a better presentation with these, one thing that you could do is sprinkle breadcrumbs across them or nutritional yeast or your homemade vegan Parmesan cheese. Um, so delicious. Um, it, many of you are familiar with some of the famous people in this uh, collection, but there's a lot of people that I'm just not discovering, like, um, what's her name? Nice Detroit. Rachel, yeah, she's going to be on the show today. She has several contributions. I've never heard of her. And it's part of my problem with being an in, such an introvert is that, of course, I have not, not heard of her. Um, but um, I looked at, through some of her material. It looks amazing. Um, her her Lebanese uh, cooking and such looks amazing. So excited to see a younger generation getting in here and and doing this because you know I'm I'm not going to cook forever. I'm going to retire in my my South Beach mansion one of these days, and that's going to be the end of that. And then you'll hire Chef Mark Weinfeld. <laughs> hire all these young, healthy, whole food, plant based chefs. No, got some questions. Uh, do you cook any raw food? Diane would like to. Debbie would like to know. I, I used to teach raw food classes. Um, I don't cook it every day. For me, raw food. Um, I do a lot of salads. That's that's my raw food thing. And sometimes a salad for me is is uh, has just a lemon squeeze of lemon juice for the dressing. So in that sense, yes. I used to make every year at Christmas a raw food granola out of um, one of my favorite raw food cookbooks. It's a gourmet raw food cookbook, and I forget the name of the- I know, it's called Pure Food and Wine. Remember they made the documentary about her, uh, Bad yep. Vegan on Netflix? Yep, the Pure Food and Wine cookbook has this Christmas granola. Uh, you, have to you have to have a dehydrator, and I, I do, I still have a dehydrator. Um, it's absolutely delicious. But other than that, and I, again, I, I've taught raw food classes, 
uh, um, many years ago when I was first teaching at Whole Foods, but not so much in my everyday. For me, a salad is, is, is makes me very happy. I eat a lot of fresh fruit um, now. I've I've given up um, my candy cravings and 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 have adopted fresh fruit. Um, and then again, I'm, I'm kind of I'm excited about how I'm feeling. But no, no, no raw foods every day. Great. And uh, Nan says, cook something from the bundle. And Janet says, do you have a Reuben recipe? It's the one thing I crave for St. Patty's Day. There is um, maybe a Reuben recipe. Is it in the China City family or the China City Quick and Easy? If you send me an email or a message somehow, I'll look and see. Um, I love Reubens. And I used to do seitan Reubens. Um, but I try not to eat as much seitan anymore. And I haven't yet tried um, soy curl Rubens or jackfruit Rubens. What about tempeh Rubens? That's what my husband's favorite restaurant up here in Auburn is called Nectar and Cafe, and he loves the tempeh Ruben. I I do not love tempeh. I made tempeh Rubens many times. Um, I'm not in love with tempeh. Um, I I but back in the day, tempeh was the the healthy source, right? And um, you, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not a tempeh fan. That's okay. Other questions? Yeah, I think what really makes a Reuben a Reuben is like you almost don't need the fake meat part. You just need the the dressing and the sauerkraut. You know. Let, let me let me back up and and answer the question like I should have answered it, which is you can in my health my salad dressings cookbook is the Thousand Island dressing recipe that I use to make Rubens. And you're right, AJ, for me, temp the sauerkraut, uh, the dressing, and I'm good to go. And it's, it's Ruben and Rubenish, Rubenesque, if you will. <laughs> Rubenesque. Wasn't that a type of art back in the day? It was the abundant women theory back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So that was a fun presentation of St. Patrick's Day recipes. Do you ever do a corned beef, a, you know, a vegan corn beef? Vegan corned beef? Mm, I've not done a vegan corned beef. Um, and I don't know why I haven't done a vegan corned beef. Oh, these are done. Um, why have I not done a vegan corned beef for AJ? You asked me this last month. Are you craving vegan corned beef? No, I just, I mean, I'm just thinking corned beef and cabbage is what, you know, a lot of people have for. I, when I used to do it, where's my spatula? When I used to do it, it was um, with seitan. And we get, I love seitan, but um, you know, I try not to. Not everybody can have it. You know, some people can't have wheat, yeah. or, and that's the only thing with that when you use that. So look at our look at our. Um, I, I'm going to tell you something. Our, our our potato cakes. You know what they look like? They look like a cookie. Well, let me hold it up for you to see. They look great. And I love how your, your silk hat has the little circles for helping you. I know, right? Because, you know, when you get to be my age, you got to, I talk, a, I, you know, I, I swear I talk like an old man, but my neighbor, who is uh, also, she's 80 years old and a lot healthier than I am, by the way. Uh, every time I talk like an old man, she, she says, I'm going to hit you if you keep talking like that. And uh, it's just a number and it's just about how you feel, isn't it? So these look awesome. Um, you don't necessarily have to. These are done as they are right here. I don't know that you need to cook them anymore. Not that on the inside, they look like a cookie, though, but look at that. Do you serve them with any kind anything? Because latkes, we always used to serve with sour cream and yeah. applesauce. Yeah, I think I said earlier, uh, look, look for the... Um, Look for the um, horseradish sauce recipe in my cookbook, which is pretty much just sour cream with added. Um, there you go. There's that. It's just sour cream with added horseradish. Um, and it's, it's my favorite. Mm, this boxy, not a bad deal. Boxy, boxy, good boxy. <laughs> Um, let me see if our, what kind of time do we have? Um, a few more minutes. Sure. Got another show at 1030, but you got some time. 
I want to show you. I don't know. I'm not so sure how this this dirt uh, cake is going to turn out, but the crust, the topping is great. It's bubbly along the sides, and I'll tell you what: if it doesn't turn out necessarily, so that you can cut it into squares like that, I might consider doing it as a cobbler type dessert, where you um, you put the filling in the bottom of it. Oh my god, that looks gorgeous! You put the filling in the bottom. I'm going to hold this up to you and try to burn myself. Put the filling in the bottom and then cover it with the uh, the shortbread top as a crumble topping. This topping isn't that gorgeous. Looks like a crumb topping, yeah. Yeah, it's like a, make a great crumb topping. And let me taste the flavor. The spices smell delicious. Oh my God, AJ. The flavor, I don't care. I don't care what else happens. Even if it turns out sloppy, if it doesn't cut well, it's absolutely fabulous flavor. It is absolutely fabulous, 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 amazingly good. So I'm thrilled with that. Um, but there you go. There's some um, something new for the Irish holidays. And hopefully, uh, did I miss anything on the bundle? That I'm, I'll be talking more on the bundle next this coming Wednesday. I'll be on Nan's show on on Friday, and I think I'm on um, I'm on again on my own on Facebook Live next Sunday, and I'll probably cook something for that um, next Sunday. But don't forget the link below helps support. And here's what I'll give you an advanced thing on you guys. Uh, I am currently working to raise money to get my new cookbook photographed and I would love to hire a photographer, but even the food costs and all of that takes up some effort. And so um, all the money that we're raising through this project is going to go for that. You want the best photographer in the business. She's vegan and she's the food stylist as well. She's multi cookbook author, Hannah Kaminsky. You're not going to get anybody better. Nobody. Okay. Well, uh, I may consider it. I, I thought about doing it myself, and I may still. I've been practicing food photography, but we'll see. Well, there's a course in the there's a there's a course in the bundle for that. See, problem solved. I already got my bundle. Ross Chef Yin, who was on the show Friday, she has oh. a food styling and she has a course. See, so you can. Oh, nice. Well, food styling is another part of that that I need practice with. Um, I don't know about you, but I haven't spent a lot of time on that. Yeah. Somebody's saying, is it possible to gain four pounds, five pounds in four days on plant-based? It depends what you're eating. It's unlikely to be able to gain four pounds. You'd have to eat an extraordinary amount of calories, but it depends on what diet you're coming from. If you were coming from a calorie restricted diet, low carb or keto, you put on weight if anytime you eat carbohydrate because you store glycogen in your muscles and livers but that's not it's very difficult it'll be very difficult but on that much fat in four days yeah you're talking about 3500 calories per pound on a bad day i might eat 4000 calories i've had days i used to be a 10000 calorie a day eater i was that's how you get to be 500 pounds is i could eat 10000 calories and you're only going to burn maybe 2000 in most of those but you have to eat an insane number of calories to gain that kind of weight. And don't try, you don't want to. Um, I, it, one of the things that I'm doing in my life now is slowing down all of it. I, I used to be such a starvation dieter just to lose weight quickly because I knew I could, and I still could. But what happens is the weight always comes back. I'm looking at more sustainable methods for weight loss, slowing it down, enjoying the process more, learning to enjoy food by, by chewing my food. Actually, chewing my food is something that people do, AJ. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. Chew your food, people. It's a thing. <laughs> Dr. Clapper always says, chew your food to a cream. There you go. So, so yeah. The four, don't, don't gain four pounds. Don't, don't do it. Don't, don't even worry. The stress on your body is just too much. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Dell, this has been great. You're going to be back for a regular show, which is in May. I don't know what day it is, but you're the first Sunday of the month. So you'll be here before Mother's Day. So you could consider doing something nice for mothers. Why don't we do a Mother's Day brunch? I think I did that last year, but 
Let's do it again. Yeah, there's new things that you could have. Like uh, you could do a tofu benedict or what else is brunch like? Uh, I'll show you my blender pancakes. Yeah, sounds I good. Where I got that recipe from, but I love them. They're so easy. They sound great. Well, this looks like a beautiful feast. Sorry, you have to go out now and you won't be able to enjoy it. No, sorry, but love oh. you guys. Yeah, this cabbage looks amazing. Well, thanks, Del. And uh, I hope you guys want to support Del because if you do, there's a link in the show notes where you can get the bundle directly for him. So he'll get the credit and then he'll have enough money to get a photographer to get the pictures taken for his next book. Yay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Del. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in 30 minutes for Linda Tyler, who has a brand new cookbook on inflammation and it's vegan and it's in Costco and she's going to be cooking from nourish to flourish.